Hello there friends and welcome for today's BG3 guide we have another very fun build. A wizard sorcerer multi-class combination that's the master of all arcane magic. With the highest DC possible for your crowd control spells we are talking about 30 plus to ensure you'll always be able to mass stun lock entire enemy packs before they can do anything at all, no matter if you are at the beginning or the end game. And everything you see here is on honor mode of course, with the very fun ability of manipulating dice rolls around you, which is why I called it the Master of Fate, as you'll get to replace dice rolls to bypass RNG with more favorable effects for your party members like getting more critical hit chance or scoring normal attacks, and worse results for enemies, for more misses and of course, failed saving throws which combines amazingly with your crowd control spells. Lastly, like any good spellcaster build in BG3, you'll be quite competent at spell damage as well with very powerful area of effect abilities. So without further ado, let us get into our Wizard Sorcerer Diviner Master of Fate Multiclass combo, first with character creation. For race, my preferred pick is as usual half elf and the wood half elf. This way you'll have higher movement, but most importantly, shield proficiency for free. And there's a lot of nice shields in this game for casters, when it comes to passives, of course. Humans can also work for this purpose, it's just that they don't have as many benefits as half elf. Then for class, we'll start as a wizard. You can also start as a sorcerer if you prefer, it's just that I want to get into the special wizard diviner subclass at the next level for once, because I never covered it before. But I'll give you both ways of progressing the build later. For cantrips and spells, I already have a best spells guide you can check to the side here, so to keep it simple, firebolt and ray of frost for damage, followed by an utility cantrip like mage hand, minor illusion or blade ward, whatever you prefer. For spells you want magic missile for a nice burst of damage, shield for extra defenses, the same for mage armor, sleep because it's quite helpful very early, find familiar for the raven path to blind enemies, followed by fall cloud because it's quite good at generating advantage, especially when you have dark vision as a half elf. For your ability scores it's pretty simple, if you're going with wizard at the start then intelligence is the way to go, we want 17 at character creation, then assign a plus 1 to dexterity so you can have 16 as usual for initiative, also armor class as you won't be equipped with armor, 14 constitution just to be safe, the remaining 2 points can go anywhere you want, but I'd rather charisma because you'll be getting some sorcerer levels later. Of course if you're starting as a sorcerer you just wanna swap intelligence for charisma. For skills, just arcana and history, this character isn't really meant for dialogue skill checks, unlike let's say a bard. As for the background, guild artisan is as usual my preferred pick, even if you won't have very high wisdom or persuasion. They are still the most commonly used dialogue skill checks. For level 2 wizard, we can select our subclass, and we of course want divination. I've never covered this before, but it is one of the best wizard subclasses. The port and dice feature is one of the strongest and most versatile of them all. After each long rest, you get two random port and dice. These dice can go from 1 to 20, just like a normal dice, in value. You can then use a reaction, but it doesn't actually cost a reaction, so you can apply it multiple times, even in the same turn per battle, to change the die outcome of any attack roll or saving throw based on the port and dice you have. So if you have a high number, use it to change allies attack rolls, especially into critical hits. Meanwhile, for low numbers, use it to reduce the enemy's attack roll so they miss, or most importantly, saving throws. Then any other level 1 spells you want, and now it's time for level 3. Now at this point you could already potentially multi-class into Sorcerer if you want to get access to meta magic as early as possible, especially the heightened spell meta magic, which is amazing for crowd control spells, to ensure they hit the enemies. A wizard plus sorcerer multi-class is actually quite fun because you'll still keep your full spellcasting progression, be it for spells learned and also spell slots, so you end up with level 6 spells just like any full caster. The only difference is you won't learn new spells as a wizard while leveling as a sorcerer of course, but it doesn't matter, because wizards can just learn them from scrolls anyways. On the other hand, if you want more divine wizard fun earlier, 
You can remain one until level six, because it's when we get another feature to empower our portent dice even further. As I've already done multiple sorcerer builds, I'll be going with Diviner Wizard for something new until level 6. But like I said, you can already multi-class. For second level spells, Cloud of Daggers is the best one. It's not really a crowd control spell, but damage-wise it's definitely the best. Besides that, just miss a step for the versatility when it comes to escaping from enemies and so on. For level 4, any other cantrip you want, including Blade Ward or Minor Illusion. Then Hold Person, amazing for crowd control, but only later when you get more spell levels. And let's say Scorching Ray for extra damage. For our feet, this is pretty important. As usual for crowd control casters, Alert is by far the best pick. When you have such a huge bonus to initiative, plus from your high dexterity score, you will always 100% act before any enemy, which of course means you'll also always crowd control everything, the entire enemy pack that is, to stun lock them into submission before they get to do anything at all. If you don't care for it, later in the game you have gear that kinda makes up for the lack of it, you can go for ability improvement and maximize your intelligence already. I'd rather alert just to be safe, especially for honor mode. For level 5 we have level 3 spells, and here are the best crowd control of them all, especially Hypnotic Pattern for Mass, Area of Effect, CC, followed by Glyph of Warding and the Sleep variant because it doesn't require concentration, so you can actually combine both in the same turn. Or stuff like Haste plus Glyph of Warding. Level 6 Diviner Wizard is when we finally get an upgrade to our Portent Dice from the Expert Divination feature. You'll have another portent die, so now you have three. Plus, when taking a short rest, you can complete a prophecy to regain one of your spent portent die, so amazing overall. As the more you can spam it, the more control you have over RNG. For spells, just slow, also amazing for crowd control, followed by counter spell to prevent enemy spell casting. Or stuff like haste, you can always learn everything from scrolls, anyways, including summons from animate dead. Level 7 onwards is when I would multi-class into Sorcerer, so we can get our nice meta magic, especially Heightened Spell. Like I said before, you can do this earlier if you prefer. The cantrip selection doesn't really matter, just go with stuff you didn't pick as a wizard. The spell selection, however, is important, because you have much higher intelligence than Charisma unless you started as a Sorcerer. Do not bother picking CC spells as a Sorcerer, that is, the ones that require saving throws and difficulty class. Because you want to cast them as a wizard instead, for higher DC. Therefore, pick either utility, buffs, or spells like magic missile that don't care about difficulty class anyways. For example, for level 7, go with shield and magic missile. For your sorcerer subclass, the three of them work just fine. My preferred pick is Wild Magic, it's not particularly strong, especially compared to how beastly it was in Baldur's Gate 2, as the Wild Magic effects are kinda... mid in this game. But anyways, it can still be fun, and the Tide of Chaos feature complements our Master of Fate style for this build, as you can always activate it to get advantage on your next attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, with increased chances of Wild Magic surges for more fun if you want. If you don't care for wild magic and the whole RNG aspect of it, go with either Draconic Bloodline, but unless you start as a sorcerer and invest into Charisma, it's mostly going to be for permanent mage armor and higher hit points, because the secondary benefit of extra spell elemental damage, well, requires you to have high Charisma. Meanwhile, Storm Sorcery is honestly just for the Call Lightning spell that you wouldn't get otherwise as a sorcerer or wizard, and it is one of the best damage spells in the game, for how efficient it is. So just pick whatever you prefer, I'll be going with Wild Magic because I've never covered it before. Any other spell at level 8, once again buffs and utility spells, like let's say Jump or False Life. Followed by Twin Spell and anything else, because the remaining choices here don't really matter. Level 9, however, or 3 levels of Sorcerer, means access to the meta magic we really want, heighten spell to force disadvantage on all enemy saving throws, followed by whatever spells you want. 
So long as you do not pick hold person because you want to cast this as a wizard. So go with stuff like for example Misty Step. So you don't have to prepare a spell slot as a wizard. We still want to remain a sorcerer until level 10 because we get an extra feat. And now it's finally time for more intelligence. Or the dual wielder feat if you don't care about alert and picked ability improvement in the level before. For level 11 and 12 you can remain a sorcerer which results in more sorcery points for more meta magic damage, or you can return to wizard, which is my preferred pick because this way you'll get an extra feat at level 12. You also start learning more wizard spells, but like I said before, you can just get them from scrolls. But anyways, good level four picks are conjure minor elemental, and honestly anything else you want because you'll just be spamming lower level spells with the upcast mechanic like. Hypnotic Pattern, Slow and so on. Then whatever else you want for spells at level 12. Followed by Dual Wielder. Dual Wielder is quite nice for spellcasters because it lets you dual wield staffs. And at this point in the game you already have access to the ultimate staffs possible for free spell casts and of course more spell DC. So what's not to love? Before getting into the gear section, just a quick note on the best spells you have, because you'll have to learn them from scrolls, at least as far as the level 4 plus ones. So, Ice Storm for the ultimate damage when enemies are wet, through let's say the Create Water spell, followed by Conjure Minor Elemental for nice summons, the same for Conjure Elemental, Hold Monster to paralyze enemies that are immune to the normal Hold Person spell, and Chain Lightning of course for the ultimate spell damage, just like Ice Storm. The rest is just spells you'll learn normally as a wizard. Now let's discover gear for our Master of Fate Diviner Sorcerer Wizard. And well, it's the classic package for spellcasters, of course. For helmets, during Act 1 you absolutely want the Shade Spell Circlet for higher spell DC. Meanwhile, for the second chapter, Fistbreaker Helm for the same purpose, culminating in Hood of the Weave at Act 3, so you always have something. For Cloaks, just Cloak of the Weave at the last act. The other Cloaks don't matter much. For Robes, you'll also always have nice choices. For Act 1, the Proctity Sparks Wall for higher DC. Meanwhile, for the second chapter, the Robe of Exquisite Focused, followed by either the Robe of the Weave at Act 3 or the Armor of the Spore Keeper. Even if you aren't a Spore Druid, it still gives you... Well, nice AC and a bonus to spell DC. For gloves, you don't really have many choices early on, mostly just the gloves of missile snaring to prevent ranged damage, as you are a somewhat frail caster. But ultimately, at Act 3, you'll want the Hell Dusk, as always, or Catherine's Nether Stone gloves for higher spell DC. The boots can be anything you want, I just have the Disintegrating Nightwalkers as usual for immunity to most difficult terrain and Misty Step for free. For Amulets, during the first and second chapters, I would just skip to the Psychic Spark Talisman, because well, an extra cast of Magic Missile is great, considering how high the damage can be when boosted by other effects. For the last chapter, however, it's all about Amulet of the Devout, for the highest DC boost possible. And when it comes to rings, during chapter 1 you don't have many good choices, just like gloves. You can use stuff like Stonewalker's Gift if you went with a race without Dark Vision. But Act 2 is when the nice rings really start appearing for spellcasters. First with the Kalos Glow Ring of course, as always one of the very few sources of extra damage that works with spells. Including multi-hit spells like Magic Missile. It stacks, of course. Followed by the Coruscation Ring, so that your spells also inflict the highly powerful Radiating Orb debuff for less enemy attack rolls, and yes, if you use this with magic missile that hits multiple times, you kinda melt away the enemy's attack rolls. For Act 3, however, you might as well replace Coruscation Ring for the Ring of Feywild Sparks. This is actually quite a powerful ring, except the game doesn't bother telling you what it actually does. <laughs> because it does increase your spell casting DC. But like I said, the game just doesn't tell you this. It's like a hidden effect. And I imagine it's working as intended because it's worked this way ever since the release of the game, I believe. 
Of course, if you're also a wild mage like I made this character, this provides you with another nice benefit from more wild magic surges. Now let's discover weapons and consumables. For Act 1, it's all about first, the Spell Sparkler, if you want more spell damage, it's amazing with Magic Missile, or the classic Melf's first staff for higher spell DC. You won't have access to the dual wield feat yet, so just go with any shield. For the second chapter, however, you might consider going with Sentinel Shield for higher initiative, especially if you didn't pick the alert feat. Otherwise, just Caterix at the end of the chapter for the highest spell DC bonus. Act 3, however, is when we of course get the truly ultimate staffs, starting with Marco Hashkir for higher elemental spell damage, one free spell cast and higher spell DC, and since we get to dual wield now, the staff of spell power, it's kinda almost the same as Marco Hashkir, as far as spell DC and yet another free spell cast, so you have two entire spell casts of any level for free per long rest. Speaking about free spell cast, I kinda of forgot to mention, but early on you have the Pearl of Power amulet to restore any spell slot up to level 3. And most importantly, during the second chapter, the Spell Crux amulet, which gets to restore any spell slot. So essentially, it's actually 3 free spells of any level when you combine the amulet with these two staffs. For ranged weapons, honestly, just the classic Bow of Awareness early for plus 1 to initiative, while during Act 3 you can go with Hell Rider for the same purpose, but better. Or, if you don't have any use for your bonus actions, you can still go with dual hand crossbows, so you'll fire the offhand attack. A good choice being the Nether Misser, because it provides you with an extra cast of magic missile. For consumables it's pretty simple, the Elixir of Bloodlust if you want more actions, including more spells cast per turn, or just Battle Mage's power, as it increases your spell DC by 3 entire points. Well alright friends, so this was it for our Ultimate CC Diviner Wizard Sorcerer Master of Fate Build and Guide. As always, if you found it useful, please remember to like, subscribe and also consider becoming a channel member if you can. I highly appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.